In this video, I'm going to show you differences and similarities between component families and in-place families, when to use either one of them, and actually stay till the end because I'm going to show you a workflow in which I use both of them and get the best of both worlds. Hi everyone, I'm Berti with BIM Lounge, it's good to see you. Make sure you stay tuned because I release BIM productivity videos weekly. Now let's get into the video. So when should you use in-place families? Well, as a rule of thumb, I try to use system families and component families as much as I can and only really use the in-place families when I need some information about the context around the element that I'm modeling in the project. And I try to keep the in-place families amount to a minimum. Why should you limit the amount of in-place families well, let me show you this uh, quick uh, comparison matrix and uh, you'll understand why. Of course, both component and in-place families can be tagged and scheduled, assuming that you're using the right category. Now, the question is, can you transfer geometries from a component family to an in-place family and vice versa? And the answer is yes, but not all the parameters that you create are going to transfer. For example, if you apply a material to an in-place family and then you turn that family into a component, the material information will transfer over. However, linear parameters won't transfer over at all. So just be aware of that. Now, what about types? You can create new types when working with uh, component families, of course, as you would normally do, but you cannot do the same with in-place families. Now, what happens when you try to create multiple instances of the same family? If you're working with components, that's easily done, and those instances are going to abide by the rules of that type but you have no types in the in-place family. So when you create or try to create multiple instances, uh, what you'll find is that Revit will create new families with different names. And of course, you'll see that the same applies to the create similar command. Now, what about system families? Can system families be component? Well, no, by definition. And can you use in-place families to create system families? And the answer is yes, you can. And actually, there are some exceptions when um, creating system families. If you create a system family within an in-place family, you can then transfer it to a component family and have, for example, a wall component family or a floor component family. But the problem is that the features and parameters in there will be very limited. So you'll be stuck with a custom form that is hard to control within the project. But technically, it is possible to have system families that are a component. Now, what about transferring families from uh, one project to another or from your project to your library? Well, of course, with the component families, you can uh, save the families out as RFA. With in-place families, generally you're more limited and uh, people tend to leave the in-place families within the project. So then you would have to open that certain project to copy the family from that project to a new project. And of course, there are exceptions to this. So you can uh, save the family the in-place family out as RFA, but in that case you would have more limitations. Now we talked about situations in which you would use either component families or in-place families, but what about using both? Can you have a workflow that allows you to get the best of both worlds and essentially get all the advantages? Well, let me show you how I use in-place families with component families. So in this case, I needed to model this uh, bookshelf that is essentially a piece of furniture as an in-place family. And you can see why. I wanted to have all the dimensions for width, height, and depth. I wanted to make sure that I could fit this and had enough information about my context. So now let me show you how to transfer this as a component because now I'd like to add some parameters to it and possibly use it on the next project as a component. Now to transfer over the family, you would essentially click on the family, select it, and uh, edit in place. And from here, you can uh, make the these all these geometries a group, like so, and maybe call it bookshelf. And then from here, you would go to File, Save As, Library, and select Group, and find the right group here. For example, this is a bookshelf that we just created and the family will be named with the same name as the group. So then let's go ahead and save it to the right folder. You see that we have our bookshelf here. 
The only thing is that you may need to recreate the cuts, but that's just a couple of clicks. So let's go ahead and do that first. And at this point, let's check the materials. So let's set this to shaded. And as you can see, the materials have been retained. So we have that information. And now what I like about this process is that I already have the overall shapes. So I can uh, go ahead and refine my family, adding parameters and additional geometries, knowing that for this specific project, this uh, shelf will fit in there. So I can uh, reload it with more parameters if I wanted to. And more importantly, I can use or I can reuse this family in future projects. So just to complete this workflow, I'm going to add some uh, reference planes and parameters just so I can uh, make this uh, family stretch easily within the project. And um, that way you can see the whole workflow. So as a recap, what I did here was I modeled the family within the project as an in-place family so I could take advantage of the context around my geometries. And then I went ahead and turned those geometries into a group so I could transfer it to a component family. And at that point, I can add all the parameters that I need and reference planes to make it usable for future projects. Now, I can bring it back to the project if I wanted to and use the component family and remove you know, or delete the current in-place family because now the component family is more advanced, is smarter, it has more parameters and it's more flexible for me to continue development. Now, question for you, how do you use in-place families and what is your experience with them? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, also let me know if this video was useful to you by giving it a like, because it really helps me reach and help more people like you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.